In a couple of our raised beds this year, we've planted different varieties of summer squash here at our studio garden. And down on this end of this bed, we've got sort of a new variety. It's known as papaya pear. And it doesn't look like your typical summer squash. Nice pear-shaped yellow squash fruits. Now this was an All-America selection winner for last year. And true to its buildup or attributes, it is a plant that produces quite a bit of fruit in a short amount of time and that may be really good for these particular plants here at our garden because we've noticed that they've got problems. Now we haven't seen a lot of squash bugs yet but we've noticed that our plants have the dreaded squash vine borer. If you look down here you can see the damage, these entry holes where those caterpillars or those larvae have tunneled through and you can even see up in here where they're causing some damage and in part of the plant you can see where their excrement has sort of come out those entry holes so it looks like sawdust maybe like if you'd taken a drill and drilled into a piece of wood and that sawdust that comes out sort of the same effect but uh, these can really mean the death of our squash plants now the squash vine borer like squash zucchini pumpkins and sometimes they'll attack other cucurbits, but the squash, zucchini, and pumpkins are their favorite. The squash vine borer is a moth that is sort of a clear winged moth, sort of a grayish color with some red and orange markings on its back and lower abdomen. But the larva or the caterpillar is what does the damage. Those mature larvae will overwinter in the soil about an inch or two deep. They'll spin a cocoon down there. In the late spring, they will emerge as an adult moth. They will fly around. The females will lay their eggs on the stem of our squash plant. And as soon as those eggs hatch, those larvae begin tunneling into the stem. And they can just eat and tunnel their way throughout the entire plant and pretty much being the death of the plant. Well, they spend about four to six weeks up inside the stem. Then they come out and they burrow into the ground where they will again pupate and emerge as a, an adult and start the whole process over. So we have two generations per year. And when those moths lay their eggs and those larvae come out and go into the ground, that is the stage where they overwinter. Now, at this point, we can't really do a lot to protect our plants. Once we see the damage, the plants are pretty much to be written off. There's no pesticide or no spray that you can apply that will kill, kill those uh, larvae up inside the stem. If you want to prevent the squash vine borers from getting to your plants, as soon as you see the squash flowers, you see these bright yellow-orange flowers of the squash plant, as soon as those start appearing on your plants, start spraying them with something like malathion and spray as often as the label will allow. The flowers actually attract the moths to the plants and they will come in and lay their eggs. So as soon as you see those flowers, begin your spray program and hopefully you won't have squash vine borers. Now some of the cultural things you can do to prevent squash vine borers would be to discard all of the infected plants. Don't compost them. Take those and bag them up for the garbage. Don't leave them anywhere around the garden. Also, tilling your garden in the fall after you, you have removed all of the plants, you can maybe destroy some of those larvae that are down in the soil. And another tilling in the spring, just to be sure. And also rotate your crops. Don't follow cucurbits with cucurbits. Now, one other last grasp thing you can do to try to save your plants and make them live a little bit longer is to try to gouge out the squash vine borer. And sometimes this is successful, but you can take a razor blade or a sharp knife and make a slit lengthwise in the stem. And as you can see, this does quite a bit of damage to the plant. But you can see where those borers have completely hollowed out that stem. And if you're lucky, you'll be able to find that caterpillar. I don't know if we're going to be able to find one, but I did find one earlier. This is what you're looking for. That is the squash vine borer. It's just a little caterpillar of that gray and red moth. But uh, maybe with a piece of wire you can gouge 
him out of there and feed him to your goldfish or something like that. Just destroy, destroy the squash vine borer. But uh, after you've made that gaping wound in your plant, you can come in with some moist compost and just pile that up around the stem and keep that moist and maybe, just maybe, some roots will begin to grow and uh, can allow your squash vine to live just a little bit longer and maybe put on a little bit more fruit. So remember, as soon as those flowers appear, start spraying your plants, get that spray all the way down to the base, cover those stems, keep your garden clean, remove those infected plants, rotate your crops, and make sure you till the soil, try to destroy those in the ground. You could try the gouging out method, but uh, you might be better off just to be content with the fruit that you've already harvested from your squash plants.